Bruce, do you ever get uncomfortable wearing a Rolex? Today I'm wearing the 116610LV, the Hulk, the green discontinued Submariner. That question is one that I get pretty reg pretty regularly, excuse me. A lot of watch guys, we want to buy, you know, an Explorer or a GMT Master 2 or another Rolex, but we don't want the added attention. We don't want people asking us, is that a real Rolex? How much did you spend on that? How did you even get that watch? You know, we don't want the attention. We want our watch to kind of fly under the radar. And uh, to, I want to answer a few common Rolex related questions as I give you guys just an update, an owner's perspective of the now discontinued 40 millimeter maxi case Submariner. I bought this about six months ago on St. Patrick's Day of 2020. And I've been wearing this watch very regularly over the past six months or so. And this has not been a safe queen for me. I know some watch collectors, they're happy to just, you know, own the watch. That desirable piece of a luxury, that, that, um, that commodity, that status symbol of luxury and success. They're fine to keep it in the safe and just be content with owning something that so many guys want to buy and relatively few people are actually able to acquire at retail. But that's not the case with me. I bought this watch because I wanted to wear this watch. I've been in love with this watch for some time. Uh, I remember when I first saw it, first saw a picture of it years ago, I thought how cool it would be to own the green Submariner. And I didn't think that was necessarily in the cards at the time because you know I was spending three, four hundred dollars on watches and not nine thousand dollars on one watch. So the fact that I was able to acquire it and pay retail really is kind of a long-term uh, dream come true for me that was full circle um, from when I first saw pictures of it, I don't even know how many years ago now. So I bought it to wear it and uh, do I ever feel uncomfortable wearing it? Does it ever get that unwarranted attention that some of us are apprehensive about? Well, I'll tell you from personal experience, nobody has noted or commented or complimented my watch. Uh, it has flown under the radar and I think sometimes we get a little bit apprehensive as watch fans like we're projecting our own concerns on other people. You know, we're concerned about our watch. We're thinking about our watch. We're looking at the watch on our wrist, right? But most people don't even notice it. Now I can't say that that will be your experience as a potential Rolex consumer. That's just been my experience. Um, I remember the one time I commented on someone's watch. I was at Niagara Falls on vacation with my family and I saw a guy wearing a Daytona. It was the stainless steel Daytona, stainless steel bezel. And I said, hey, nice Daytona. And he looked at me like I was about to like try to rob him, right? It was really awkward. And we're in a huge crowd of people, you know, how it is at touristy spots. And I said, oh no, it's cool. I, I'm wearing my GMT Master too. And it was just the most awkward thing. So I don't compliment people whenever I spot a watch in the wild, usually, uh, but nobody has noticed mine. And, and um, that's just been my experience over the past six months. Now I've worn this a lot, like I mentioned. I've taken this camping. I've, I've gone to Simpson Springs with my family, you know, where we are on a dirt road for a couple hours to get to a little camping spot out in the West Desert. And the watch was on wrist the whole time. And it's been a great camping watch. And I have to remind myself that this is not just a desirable watch that's gone up in the secondary market to ridiculous levels. This is a sport watch. It's a tool watch. It's made to be used and worn and loved. And I have a friend named Mark, Mark Goldberg, uh, who says, feel the steel, feel the steel, hashtag feel the steel. You're supposed to be wearing your Rolex watches and not letting them sit in the safe. So I've taken this hiking in the Wasatch front. I took this Let's see, with my family, we went down to Vegas for the weekend when I purchased my Grail watch, the VC Overseas 4500 V in blue. This was the watch that was on wrist that entire weekend. And um, no, I didn't feel uncomfortable with it at all. In fact, this has been a lovely watch and I love this more now than I did the first day of ownership on St. Patrick's Day of 2020 when I was so excited to go to my authorized dealer, which is OC Tanner in Salt Lake City, and purchase the watch from a buddy of mine that works there and film the experience for, 
you know, the YouTube channel. I'm, I'm more in love with it now than I was before. Now I've got another question here. What about resale value? Bruce, this watch, you got it at retail. You spent um, roughly $10,000 after taxes, but if you sold it, you could make your money back plus about $7,000 in the pocket and you've experienced the watch, you've enjoyed it, you've, you know, you, you've loved the piece over the past half a year. Why not cash out now and use that money and, and try other watches? I, I know a lot of people that have said similar comments to me. And, and let me try to re respond respectfully because there is some, some validity to your comments. There's some logic and common sense associated, but you know what, for this hobby, for me, this is an emotional hobby. Like I said, I've wanted this watch for a long time. This is kind of a, I don't want to say a grail watch, but it was a watch I didn't know necessarily would ever be in the cards for me. And so it's been great. I love this. I don't want to sell this watch. Every time I look at my wrist and I see the beautiful, vibrant shades of verdant green, the sun ray, uh, man, I, I, I appreciate this thing to me. It's not about how much money I could make if I sell it. It's about my connection to the watch and all the memories that I've made and how enjoyable it is to wear on an everyday basis. So I'm not tempted to sell it, but who knows, maybe in the future when this watch reaches absolutely silly money on the secondary market, which very well could happen, you know, in the next decade, maybe I change my tune. Maybe there's something else I want to enjoy and wear and use that currently I think is not in the cards. Maybe I want a full precious metal, uh, you know, paddock or AP or whatever it is. Maybe at some future point I do, but as of right now, no way. I love this watch too much and I'm not even tempted to sell it because it's not about the money. It's not about having a commodity. It's about enjoying the watch that I've long loved, if that makes sense. It's again, it's very emotional and less logic driven. Now I get another common question and that is, Bruce, don't you get tired of that green? Isn't it a bit obnoxious? It doesn't go with everything. It's not very versatile. And you know what? I found that to be the opposite with this thing. I, I look at this and man, I've got a thing for a green dialed, beautiful watch, right? It's so pretty. I, I know I'm, I'm fawning over a tool watch. It sounds ridiculous. I probably sound just so silly, but man, I think this is so gorgeous. In some lights, it looks like I'm wearing a Kermit. In other lights, you know, you, you see that bright pop of green and it's such a beautiful shade of green. It's not too Christmassy. It's not too olivey or forest, right? It's, it's just a lovely color. And I wear a lot of neutral colors. I wear a lot of black. I'm wearing a black Led Zeppelin t-shirt today. Uh, I, I wear gray shirts. So, I, you know, I've never really found an issue wearing this watch every day, whether it's shorts or, or whatnot. You know, it looks good. Does it look good with the shirt and tie with a, with a cuff? I mean, it, it fits under a cuff fine, but I think it looks a little out of place. I'd rather wear one of my other watches in that type of instance. And if I ever, you know, need something a bit more conservative, like I'm craving a good black dial, I've got a sapphire sandwich in the collection that I love wearing and it's an excuse to wear that. So no, I haven't found any issues, but it's not my only watch. If this was my only watch, I could see that becoming uh, kind of an issue. Now, how has this performed over the past six months? I mentioned I've taken it hiking and camping and on vacation. Uh, have I abused this watch? I, I've tried not to. Like if I'm gonna be playing pickleball or spike ball or something, I take it off. If I'm gonna be at the computer for an extended amount of time, I take it off. I don't want an unnecessarily swirlies on my bracelet. So I like to think I'm pretty responsible, but I'll drop in a picture of how well this has held up over the past six months. It looks great. Uh, there is a little nick in the, in the edge on the 10 o'clock side of the maxi case, and that, that hurts a little bit, but I don't really notice it until I get it in the right angle and the right light. Uh, the bracelet has a few hairlines. The clasp has the most amount of hairlines, but overall it's held up very well and the timekeeping has been awesome. I know the new 3235 is very highly regarded, very touted right now amongst us in the watch enthusiast community, but man, I respect the 3135 caliber. There's a reason why this is 
Just such a great workhorse for Rolex over the past 30 years. It's very well designed and engineered. The architecture is robust. It's not a beautiful movement. It's just a very reliable one and, and suited very well for use as an everyday watch. Now, let me show you this on the time grapher. You guys can see zero beat error, nice healthy amplitude of about 300. And it's spot on, it's zero or minus one is what I found. And it doesn't matter how frequently I wear this watch or what position I let the watch rest in in the safe, it is always spot on. So I rarely have to unthread the crown and hack the movement and adjust it perfectly to sync it with the atomic time. I don't have to do that very much. In fact, um, last month, I think I let it go 20 seconds fast and, and it's still just about spot on right now. Like I, I rarely have to adjust it. So I appreciate that. So really in summation, it's a beautiful watch that I've long loved. I don't care about the resale value. Sure, that's a nice thing, but that's not why I purchased this watch. It's held up very well. Uh, it's versatile, it's beautiful. It reminds me of my emotional connection to this hobby. And, uh, and I really do enjoy it. Now, are there any other quirks or things about this that I love or that I hate from an owner's perspective that maybe you wouldn't be aware of as a potential consumer? Not really. This is a pretty cut and dry, straightforward watch. I love the bezel. Take a listen. Such a nice bezel. It doesn't matter if it's fast or slow. It's such a satisfying operation and has been my favorite bezel. And I love the adjustability of the bracelet here, the glide lock. I can make it longer or shorter in a number of seconds. You know, the action of the flip lock and everything is, is just top notch. The loom is great. Um, and I'm not bothered by the lack of anti-reflective treatment on the sapphire crystals because the crystal reflections seem to be enlarged and not defined. Um, I've had watches that have had ARC and I can barely focus in on the dial because the reflections are so crisp and mirror-like on the sapphire and I don't get that with this. So I get the light play, I get the presence, I get the enjoyment, I get the day-to-day -day accuracy and reliability. It flies under the radar. At least that's been my experience and so everything over the past six months has just been awesome. So that concludes my, uh, my six month update owner's perspective of the Rolex Hulk. Uh, no, I'm not tempted to sell it. I'm not tempted to swap it out with a Kermit or a two-tone bluesy or anything like that. I'm loving this watch. And I hope you found this video enjoyable, a little bit informative and helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. If you have something specific you wanna go over in more detail, reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.